little bit. Mine is? Maybe at least. Okay. So uh, it's recording, Clay. Just want to let you know we we had some issues with recording in another one. So I got it recording and all right. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So um, I have to read my little script, so I'll do that. We'll call the meeting to order. As a preliminary matter, this is Kristen Mazzacci, Needham Cultural Council Chair. And permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present, can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative and I'm going to state each person's name and then you just um, confirm that you are here. Okay, let's see, Sharon Breitbart. Here. Elizabeth Cook. Here. Kathy Friedberg. Here. Julia Gould. Here. Yael Halpern. Here. Monique Harrington. Here. Uh, let's see, Gail Lustig, not on, right? Okay. Um, Kristen Mazzacci, that's me. Ann McCaffrey. Here. Betsy Mullane, not on. And Charlie Nanda. Present. Wonderful. So I confirm we have a quorum of nine people. Awesome, thank you, Charlie. All right, so good evening. This open meeting of the Needham Cultural Council is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to, the COVID, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical locations. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting uh, will not or yeah, feature public comment. For this meeting, the Needham Cultural Council is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured on the recording. Meeting materials. All supporting meeting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, please permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. For items with public comment, um, I don't know if we have to do this part because we're not doing that yet. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay. All right, so we'll now turn to the first item on our agenda. Everyone should have received that by email. Um, it's also posted on the town website. Welcome and introductions. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you on Zoom. Hi. <laughs> um, and uh, we have a good amount of things to do tonight, uh, but not a ton, so hopefully we can keep this nice and short and sweet. Starting with our next agenda, um, 
item, which is to approve the past minutes. So you all should have received those as well um, by email. So if someone is willing to have a to uh, do a motion to approve the minutes, that would be great. Oh, Sharon Breitbart, so move. And then if someone can second the motion. Second, Ann McCaffrey. Great, and that means our uh, minutes from our last meeting are approved. Thank you. Okay, moving to our next agenda item, update on the MCC grant process. So since Gail's not on yet, I will um, update everybody on that. Last meeting, we voted to um, accept um, a number of written modifications to grantees that were changing the date of their event. Um, so everything that we accepted or approved in the meeting, I did send out emails to let everyone know that they were approved. Um, so that was done and they were notified. Then I believe one came through after the fact, um, the Discovery Museum. So because we had voted to uh, blanket accept any other um, requests for change of date or anything like that, I accepted the Discovery Museum's change of date. And you know, I'm thinking, Charlie, maybe it will make sense to post on our drive those letters um, so that everyone can see them in case anyone's interested to know what they all say. In addition, Gail and I did some work this week to make sure that all grantees had received their funds. There were a couple of grantees who sent in their information a little bit late or later than the deadline, so Gail had not processed them with the town. So Gail and I work to make sure that everyone is up to date. Anyone who sent anything in, um, any of their documents in, pretty much after like end of February hadn't been paid. So Gail and I just made sure that that whole process is in the works and um, any information has been given to Michelle Ballancourt so she can release the funds. There were only two groups that um, were kind of question marks for us. One is Meet Julia Child. They have never sent in their documents that we know of. So I did reach out to them by email to say, we haven't received your documents, you haven't received your funds, um, and I haven't heard back yet. So once I hear back, um, I'll make sure that gets to the Needham Cultural Council web, uh, email, and then Gail can take it from there and make sure that they get their funds. The only other um, group that we weren't sure about was Dancing Through the Decades. So they had sent in their paperwork, but said that they didn't know if they could meet the other half of the funds to do their event. So we hadn't released funds yet for them. I did speak with Eileen, the contact there today, um, and she basically said that they are working on a... Um, a virtual version of their program and they're working with other towns because they got funds from other towns as well and um, they're hoping to find ways in each town to get that to seniors to watch and do virtually so I just told her to keep us in the loop and to let us know um, what happens with that so that we can also participate and that we will release the fu their funds to them if they're doing that work. So that's pretty much it in terms of MCC grant um, information. Anyone have any comments or questions on that agenda item? If you do just raise your hand and then I'll just call you out. I don't think we have to go through everyone specifically, but just by a show of hands if you want to make a comment or you have a question, I'll call on you. Okay, great, moving on. Um, our next agenda item is an update of the end of the year reception newsletter. So to tell you the truth, I can't really remember exactly where we left this. So I know Julia was willing to do some work on this. I'm not sure if we started anything. Um, so maybe Julia, you can kind of give us a little update on what you're thinking. Yeah, so I haven't done anything yet, but um, I definitely think we can get something out like pretty soon. Um, I think it's just a matter of what 
are we saying in the newsletter? Um, and I'm not sure if we want to talk a little bit about that now. Um, like, do we want to just, uh, thank every, you know, thank our grantees and, and ask them to, sh you know, as they, um, hopefully start doing their events as things start opening up, you know, make sure that they're sending us photos or videos of stuff that they're doing. I think we should do an ask so that we have at least something next year to point to, you know, what we helped fund. Um, I wasn't sure if we wanted to maybe call attention to some of the stuff that we're doing outside of the grants. Like, do we want to have a little section about the art boxes or, um, you know, kind of like what we've done this past year outside of, you know, uh, the actual grants. Um, I'm open to other ideas that people have. Just again, raise your hand if you have an idea or you want to add to the conversation and I'll call on you. And then just when I call on you, you just have to um, state your name for the recording. Charlie. Hi, this is Charlie Nanda. What I kind of remembered was that we were going to chat about it more in the marketing committee. And then we kind of made that marketing committee um, to, to talk about the newsletter. And I had two ideas because I think we need to do a community survey. So I thought if it's an online newsletter that maybe we could throw that survey in there to get some community input about what we should do for the future. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, the, I think that's great. Yeah. And then the second thing was there's this really cool art project that I think we mentioned Tova Scepter's. Um, is that how you say your last name, Yael? Tova Scepter is doing from Gorse Mills. Uh, Spectre. Spectre, thank you. Um, that's like a community art project that's like a chains that people can do online. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to highlight some art projects that are that are going on in town right now as well. And the art box. And I think somebody else also mentioned getting past recipient photos in it. That was the last time we talked about that. Yes. So I think that all makes sense. And in terms of the committee, all of the emails for any grantees for the last few years are on the MCC toolkit. And so if you access that, you can get all those emails. And obviously we have our own email list on the Google, on the share drive. So I think the committee should be able to reach out directly in that way. So my only thought is um, maybe we should just at this meeting make some decisions on what the content is so that you don't necessarily have to have another meeting to approve the newsletter because then it will take longer to get it out. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, so let's just do a quick vote. Well, actually let's wait. So based on what Julia put forth, does anyone have anything additional they want to add to the newsletter? Or anything they feel strongly they don't want to include in the newsletter just so we have a, a general sense of what we want in there okay so can we take a vote to just say that we're going to give julia and the members of our um, media committee that we call it marketing committee sorry um our blanche in terms of deciding what is included in the um, newsletter and the overall uh, look and design of the newsletter. Awesome. So um, we, I think, Charlie, we have to do a, a roll call for it, right? Um, for a vote, yeah. yeah. Do you mind? Just no, not at all. You did it last time. Thanks. Okay. So I'm only going to roll call people that are here. So yeah. Roll call, yay, if you give carte blanche. Oh, do we make, need to make a motion then first if it's a, um, yeah. so. Can I ask a qu clarification question? Yeah. So the, the newsletter is something that's gonna be every cycle, it's gonna be this, you no? Know, no, it could be, but all mm -hmm. we're thinking about right now is a newsletter that replaces our end of the year reception because we can't do it. Okay, and it so. It could go forward from there. And so is it going to have a particular design as well as content? Is that what you were asking about? 
Okay. So we, yes, so the marketing committee is going to work on, so the marketing committee we created last meeting is going to work on this newsletter, create the content and the layout and have the ability to send it without coming into meeting again and, and having it voted on. So my question is, is there going to be graphics on the newsletter, decorate, you know, some kind of a design or artwork on it? And is it okay to make a suggestion that there be a theme to this artwork that sort of represents everything about our community that we've experienced 2020. There's been a lot of resilience with COVID-19. There's been a lot of energy behind coming together with diversity. Could it have something that encompasses all of those aspects of our community in a very artistic expression? Um, Monique, are you on the marketing committee? I not sure. I think I raised my hand for it, but I haven't. I haven't. You know what, let's go to the minutes. Do you have that on the minutes, Charlie? Yeah, let me just double check if I can. Just checking, because it'd be great to have your input, Monique, when the committee oh. meets, because that Monique would Monique is. Help. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So that's great. And then you can see it before it goes. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. However, I can. Happy to do any little bit <laughs> to contribute. That's great. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, this is Julia. Um, I just had one more question. Do we want to include like a video message of some sort with this? Um, so that there's like a little bit more of a human aspect to it rather than just like sending an email? So my only thought is if we want to do something like that, we may just have to run it by Sandy. Um, only because I think if it's if it's a quick hi, hello, thank you for being part of our LTC yeah. program, I think that's fine. That's but if there were anything, about. yeah, that were a little bit more um, making comments about things that are going on or anything like that, I think Sandy should see it before it goes out, maybe. Yeah. There's a lot that's gone on, like dreamers have gotten their, you know, their full like, rights and everything, and right. also LGBTQT. A plus plus. They've they've also had a wonderful. This is their month, so it's a nice. I think all these things. If it's a way to incorporate the different expressions of our community, because we are. That's what we do in terms of artistry. Like we express life. So. Yes, and and I do think that you guys can all talk about that in the marketing committee meeting. I I would argue that the newsletter is more about celebrating. Um, the Needham Cultural Council and the community and what the Needham Cultural Council does. Not that all those things aren't important, sure. but making sure that we're really focusing on Needham Cultural Council versus um, the overall kind of political or whatever climate, just because as we know, that can all get um, somewhat heated. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I um, meant nuances of the whole year, but yeah. if you don't, but if we don't, if we just want to be artistic in a very um, esoteric way, that's totally fine. I just, uh, yeah. And in, in general, although it doesn't need to come to a vote, it might not be a bad idea to run it past Andy before it's sent out. Yeah. Is probably the best way to do it, just to make sure we covered our bases. Okay, so let's start again. Um, Charlie, if you can take a vote, and this is to give the marketing, marketing committee carte blanche to create the, um, the end of the year newsletter in place of our reception and to also create the design for it and the distribution of it. So did you make that as a motion, Kristen? Oh, sure, sorry. Yeah. I motion that we vote yeah. to give the marketing committee all those things. I second that. I third. There is no third. <laughs> okay, so Gail, I third. Yeah. Second and third. <laughs> I, heard you, I heard you second, Gail, and then I'll do a, a roll call. So let's hear from Sharon Breitbart. Yay. Yay. Elizabeth Cook. Yay. Kathy Friedberg. She's on mute. Yay. She's on mute. There she goes. Yay. <laughs> uh, Yael Halpern. Yay. Julia Gould. Yay. Monique Harrington. Yay. Uh, Ronald Lowry, Gail, Gail Lustig. Yay. Gail's here. Hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. <laughs> uh, Krista Mazzacci. Yay. Yay. Anne McCaffrey. Yay. Uh, Julia Gould is twice. And Charlie Nanda. Yay.
Okay. Awesome. Um, and yes, Charlie, I don't think I said this, but I think that's an excellent idea. I actually had put it on my list to say, just include a way for people to be able to give feedback uh, because every year the Needham Cultural Council or the local cultural councils have to get um, feedback from their community. It used to be every three years, but it's now an annual assessment every year. So there just has to be some way that our LCC community can reach out to us and tell us how we're doing and stuff like that. And so that's if a, great it, way, a great way to do it. Uh, Char Charlie, so if, if um, our com marketing committee talks about it, maybe we also add some sort of, I don't know, like mission statement statement about the cultural council and maybe that mm -hmm. can include like a nod to what you're talking about, Monique, like what our values are and what our point is as a cultural council and we could incorporate that all in there too. And just a thought that there there is that blurb that's on our MCC um, page sort of. Um, so if anything gets changed and there is any new um, language that you want to include, I would also put it there so that it's consistent, if that makes sense. And we haven't changed that in a few years, so it probably is due for an update. Is that different than what our like objectives are for the year for the grant itself? That's a different so there's, thing, right? There's two things. There's like a statement that talks about what the Needham Cultural Council's um, priorities are. And then I do believe there you can also talk a little bit more about what you're looking for in the grants that you accept. But there's definitely like a priority statement on there. Isn't and that's the one that's due September 1st? Yes, probably. Okay. Before the grant cycle. This is Sharon. Isn't some of this set by the town? Isn't our purpose stated on the town's website and that's how we're appointed, what we're appointed to do? Or we can have some self-determination in there? I think there's some self-determination in there. It's always been very generic. We haven't really delve more into what specific goals the Cultural Council has. I think ours has always been to support Needham-based artists um, was kind of the main focus. But I think you can be more nuanced and write up a little bit more of a, um, I wouldn't say targeted, but you know, a, a richer statement than what's there. For the MCC or for the town? So my guess is that the town one mirrors the MCC one. And if it doesn't, it should. It does. So we, it's boilerplate language. It's, right. um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and it may make sense to look at some other towns too, because they're all on there um, and just see what other towns are doing. Mm. All right, great. Um, anything else before we move on to the next agenda item? Just raise your hands and I'll call on you. I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I think Hang out that, yourself. Charlie and Enda, I, I think that um, the point of the priorities is to be a reflection of that survey so that we can sort of specify what grants we're looking for a little more if we wanted to for September 1st. And so it's supposed to, I think the idea is we're supposed to be able to be um, agile with what the community needs are specifically with our grants. But I think we've always cast a wider net so more people could apply with more ideas. I, it confuses me how that works a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I feel like when that statement was written originally, we didn't have as many applicants. So I do think some towns may hone in on, like for example, I think Needham-based work or Needham-based audiences that that's always been very important. Um, I'm not sure it spells that out because I don't have it in front of me, but um, you know, you could just be a little more specific so that people realize it's not worth their time to apply if they only do something for Box Pro, you know, or wherever. Yeah. Okay, that does yeah. make sense. I, mm -hmm. I think yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. I remember my first year, we had very few applicants, but I also sorry, Gail, think- Sorry, Gail, will, will you just announce yourself before oh, sorry, you Gail Lustig. the recording? Thanks. Sorry, Gail Lustig, no Vice Chair. Um, so we used to have very, a limited number of applicants and some of them that seem broader are actually 
like the Dis Discovery Museum, for example, because they're one of the few places that serve that need within like driving distance, we consider them, but there are other groups that have nothing to do with Needham that mm -hmm. we don't necessarily want to sponsor because we don't feel it's going to benefit our community. So I don't think that's changed, but mm -hmm. it's more, you know, once we lost the Needham Children's Museum, that was something that we just don't have. Mm -hmm. um, and we generally also, there are some people who say, we're going to ask all 30 cultural councils in the area um but it might be hosted a 45 minute drive away from us that we don't consider so i think our statement is consistent mm -hmm. um but we we do have a lot more people asking for grants because people are more aware of them mm -hmm. anything else before we move on Okay, moving on to our next agenda item, update on our media plan. So uh, Yael Halpern is going to talk a little bit about that. Yael Halpern. Um, I submitted the article. Um, I did a redraft of Betsy's article and then Anne polished it up very nicely. Um, and I, she gave me a picture of her and her daughter next to the art box. So I submitted that to both Hometown Weekly and the Needham Times. Once one of them publishes, I will spread that around on social media. Um, but I don't want to post anything before someone publishes it so that it isn't redundant. Um, so there's that. And it, does this um, include the calendar or is that a separate issue? This includes the calendar. So I spoke with Sandy and um, we... I came to the conclusion once she showed me the platform that the town uses that the calendar they can offer us is insufficient. We can't, she has given us permission to find an external calendar that they can upload onto their platform, but we have to find it, pay for it if necessary, um, and get it approved by the tech committee before any of that can happen. Um, so I've been in a holding pattern just because um, I need to figure out whether or not we're doing something paid or unpaid. I've contacted both, um, some, I, I contacted Somerville to see what, who they use. Newton uses a, um, a plugin, a free plugin that they, um, that works through WordPress. Um, so I have to check with the town whether or not the WordPress plugin would work, would be compatible. And then I, I also figured that this was partly the marketing committee that uh, we need to know whether or not this is something the community wants before moving forward. So I feel like it should be a survey question before we put the effort in, because it seems like a great idea on my end, perhaps on the committee's end, um, but certainly if people aren't showing that they have interest, it might not be worth putting the time and energy in. That's all I got. Great. Any comments or questions? Yes, Sharon, go ahead. Karen Breitbart. Is it compatible with, uh, say, like a Google Calendar? So Google Calendar does not have the search functions that I think would be necessary in order to make it worthwhile. Okay, thanks. Charlie? Yeah, yeah. Will you tell us an update of that meeting with Cindy? Because I don't think the full council actually heard what happened after meeting with the new PIO officer. There he was, was not there. Oh, um, okay. It was just Cindy. The one that was... Um, the so first one that I was late to. Yeah. 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 It was a while ago, and that's why I kind of was hoping you remembered better than I remembered what happened. Um, we talked about the calendar and then she was asked, wasn't she asking for more stories from us? Uh, more so... Stories? We, she, um, they said we could have our website 
um, as a Facebook page. Um, and we talked about having it as a tab off of the town's Facebook page. Um, and part of that was also getting the calendar approved um, and, but, and having that hosted on the town's website um, under on our page and updating the look and feel of the Needham Cultural Council page. Uh, but as I said, if we can't get something that has a decent searchability and search function for people to use it, it's not really worth putting something else up there that's hard to use. Thanks. Thank you. I do feel like it makes sense if we're going to ask very specific questions on the newsletter, um, like a survey, then we should probably additionally email that survey to everyone um, or make a link or whatever somehow versus just saying on the newsletter, please give us your thoughts about, you know, something more open ended. So maybe it will, you know, be creating a survey monkey or something. I don't know. And yeah, Al Halpern, um, once the, the newsletter is done, um, last time we were able to turn um, the articles that um, Julia had put on the newsletter into media publicity, um, I think something that has a survey attached to it would be worth publishing on a larger scale just to try and get a broader perspective mm -hmm. and draw attention to what we're doing. Definitely. I mean, it could be a good time to use the papers in that way, just because I'm sure they're looking for content mm -hmm. since there's no sports and all those kinds of things. So it may be a good time to use that as a way to, um, you know, get an article in that talks a little bit more about what Needham Culture Council is all about, that we want more input, we want to be more involved and, in, you know, et cetera. Um, yeah, I'll help her again. I did reach out to Gore Smells to ask them some questions about what they have been doing virtually and collaborations. Um, Kat, uh, Charlie mentioned um, Tova Spector, who we asked, who was very interested in doing the mural project when we have more information about what that might look like. Um, she's doing one project, but I, I'm talking to their board to try and figure out what projects they're doing to help just highlight the one and only art studio that we have in town. That'd be such a great article, just like what artists have been doing during COVID-19. Like, it'd be really interesting. Yeah. yeah. There have been massive amounts of collaborations that mm -hmm. no one would have had the time for otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we have a newsletter and we get some articles like those out, we might be able to find other people that we can highlight and things that are going on that would be worth talking about. Speaking of that, just quickly, the Russian theater, I can't remember the name of it, it's just escaping the Arlequin me. Arlequin Theater. Uh, Arlequin. They have been doing some amazing stuff virtually. So just something interesting if you're looking for something to like okay. look at. Um, I think a lot of it you actually have to pay to see. Okay which is great because they're actually making money, but um, I think they've been doing some really neat work, so. Anything else to add to our uh, media plan or anything else yeah. you'll talk about? Yep, Gail, mm -hmm. go ahead. Gail Lustig, I just wanted to mention, since you mentioned the Arlington players, that Needham Community Theater is putting on a virtual show in a couple weeks, about a month from now, they just started rehearsals and they're making it free, but asking for donations. Mm -hmm. um, because we did pay rights, but just because we were sad, we had to cancel our season. So we're doing a, a Zoom show. So that's very exciting. It's very hard to get rights to shows that you can do online, as you know, Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're excited that we're going to be putting it on. That's great. Anything else, Charlie? Charlie Nanda. Yael, um, you weren't at the last meeting, so we just assumed you would be on the marketing committee. Uh -huh, really? <laughs> getting, getting the I marketing showed up tonight committee. to make sure I didn't get on anything else I didn't approve. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that doesn't get you to come to the meeting. 
There you go. Yeah, Elle, I hear your kids calling. <laughs> but I was a little late because I had to put my son down. <laughs> and so, this those days of putting my kids to bed at seven. Uh, <laughs> only one that, down. If yeah. I send you the list of the people on the committee, will you schedule a marketing committee meeting? Yes. <laughs> I. If I start an email that says, can yes. we have a marketing committee meeting? Okay. By the way, um, I had a long conversation with Sandy today, and one of the things I wanted some clarification on is how much work can be done in committee, um, because also Charlie mentioned maybe not meeting um, in the during the summer in full committee. Uh, so basically, the co the commit sorry in full um, council. Basically, committees can meet, um, and what did we say, Charlie? It has to be less than five people, less than a quorum? It has to be less than a quorum. Yeah, anytime where there's a quorum, quorum, which is like a simple majority of our group, meaning six or seven, if we're 12, so now we're even, but so six, um, then it's considered a council meeting. So it has to be like a public meeting with everything that goes along with that. So if a committee is less than the quorum, then we can meet. And then anything can be worked on in committee that's already been approved by the council. Um, and that includes obviously spending any money. So for example, if we decide that we, we vote that we're going to do an art project and we're going to use X artwork, that's all fine and to have a committee meeting that works on that project. What you can't do is decide, and this was Sandy's, uh, this is, was her example, you can't decide that there's gonna be someone standing on the box every day as like public art, because that would be changing the fundamental project. So that's basically the rule of thumb there. So committees can do a good amount of work to get something moving forward um, and done without having the full cultural council um, meet. So that's just something to think of. Um, especially if, when we uh, get to the end of the meeting and we talk a little bit about what me what meetings we were able to schedule and which ones we weren't. Sorry, Sharon, go ahead. Sharon Breitbart. So after tonight, we, we are 10, is that correct? Yes. Just checking. Yes, yeah, so Ron and myself are both, our six year terms are up. We have to take a year off. Although, hi, Charlie Nanda, I do, would like to mention that Kristen is allowed to stay on as ex, ex, officio, ex officio for a year if you'd like to take. Which is fortunate because she's on the marketing committee. Oh, so no, I don't think I am. How many, how many people are on the I marketing I just checked the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It looks like I am on the marketing committee. Yeah. Oh. Yay. Great. I can still help on the marketing committee. Um, yeah, so Elizabeth asked how many people are on marketing currently on the marketing committee. I'm seeing Anyone five. Know? I see five. I see five. I can repeat the names if you want, if that helps. No, I was just trying to track the conversation to see if um, you could have that meeting. Yeah. yeah. All you just yeah, said. Yeah, I did Kristen isn't on that. it. Yeah, there's right. Kristen's well, exhibition. Really She's just yeah. helping. Thank you. So there's an opening, Elizabeth, if you'd like to join. No, no, I, oh. I'm just trying to understand. Thank yeah. you. No, definitely. Okay, great. Um, anything else about our media plan that anyone wants to comment on or add to conversation? Okay, great. I have, I have, will, I have something. I noticed oh, that the, art, yes, the, artists, the artists in Cambridge, like the dancers and the performers, um, in Cambridge are actually represented on their council web page. So I know you mentioned the Russian artist, if there's anyone like that, that we can sort of have maybe some uh, influence that reminds anybody that the arts are thriving and working and needing to be still supported in the community. I see that um, Cambridge does that. They're kind of highlighting some of their, they have dance complex over there some really cool arts organizations. I don't know if that can kind of be like a motif around <clears throat> the letter or not, but that's I just neat. wanted to point that out. I think that's a great idea. I think um, 
the <laughs> website has always been a frustrating piece for the Needham Cultural Council for the last six years that I've been on it. So obviously having a media um, plan and a marketing committee, I think the idea is to make steps to, to, to create a platform where we can showcase artists and be more of a resource in that way. I don't think we're there yet, but I think the newsletter is a great way to start that process. Um, so that's, that's a great idea. Anything else before we move to our next, next agenda item? Okay, great, moving on. Um, all right, so an update of potential public art projects. So I did have a conversation with Sandy based on our meeting last time where we kind of floated a bunch of ideas out there. Um, and as far as the art box project, um, I guess that's not, well, yeah, we can put it under this. Um, just so you know, Charlie, uh, if you send all the information to Sandy, she thinks that this could go um, in front of the select board, but as part of um, not one of their live meetings, they do a, um, what did she call it? Hold on, I have to find my notes. Um, part of their consent agenda so that they just can say yay or nay without it having to actually go to meeting. That's great. So just That's get great. her everything. So some sort of memo with the information, timeline, pictures, and then she'll get it on the consent agenda and it will happen fast. That's great. And did she mention the design review board if we had to go in front of them as well? So she basically thought that that might do it. Oh. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. I mentioned both to her and she said, well, let's just get it on the consent agenda of the select board. Okay. So maybe they'll say that it needs to go in front of the, that board, but I'm not sure. I think that's the first step anyway. Sounds like a faster timeline, that's great. Yeah. Um, okay, the next thing I talked to her about was the mural. So I mentioned that both the Community Center of Needham and Needham Cultural Council are both kind of in this mural wanting to do something. Um, and th there's nothing that's gone forward for the Community Center other than that they have had a connection with Tamitha Bibbo at Pollard to some sort of indoor mural in one of the long hallways. So that basically Sandy said that we could collaborate with them without having to go through her or anything. So if Tamitha Bibbo okays a mural and Needham Cultural Council wants to work together with the Community Center of Needham and provide artists or um, I don't know, volunteers or whatever, we can just go ahead and do that. So we don't have to go through the town to get that approved. Um, so that's something I'm working a little bit with that group. So if I hear that they're moving forward, then I'll absolutely reach out to Needham Cultural Council. And so if anyone's interested in helping, that could come together. Um, the, oh, she also mentioned that that's something that Paul Good also is very much in the throes of working on as well. And so reaching out to him would be another way to move forward on that um, in some sort of a collaboration. So in some ways, I feel like it's like in some ways, one or the other, Paul Good's probably working on his own. She mentioned the Chapel Street area that they work on a lot over there. Um, or there's this kind of way of going a little bit more towards the community center group and doing something it looks like for them in Pollard. And then there's the idea that the Needham Cultural Council can do their own, but then obviously we have to go through the town and find a space, and it would probably be a longer process. So that's the mural. I mentioned to her the, um, the idea of the sidewalk art or um, crosswalk art or this kind of pavement project that we've talked about before. She basically said that they're very interested in sidewalk reminders, like heads up, phone down. And I guess they've done something with that in town. Um, but she was very open to the idea of you know, Culture Council helping create some of that type of messaging. But again, that's something that has to be done with Sandy and might take a little longer to get going. But it's something that she sounded very open to having help on. And then, um, seeing if there was anything else. 
think that were those were all the projects I talked to her about. Oh, last one, the picnic table. So we did not talk about this in our last meeting, but then um, an email went around from Greg Reedman, and he is on the um, chamber. He's the chamber president, Newton Needham chamber president, and that they were really, really successful in terms of having the picnic tables in town so people could eat, take out um, outside in town square. They were looking for more picnic tables. And so I saw that and thought, oh, that's great. I think I sent an email around. It would be really fun for Needham Cultural Council to provide a table. Obviously, that's something that would cost money. I'm not sure we're ready to vote on that for this meeting. We can decide if we want to or not, um, if someone makes a motion. But Sandy was absolutely open to it. But it's a great idea, and the town would really appreciate it said that we would have to do it through a PO um, in order to get it paid for so that we would have to work yeah. with Sandy yeah. and Nikki um, to find the right vendor that we could buy from and use a PO. That most likely it would come from the Need Arts account. I do think that there could be some money left over in the Needham Cultural Council account because there's the possibility that some artists don't use their funds. But we can't count on that. Um, the other idea is if funds are available in the next fiscal year, which we don't know yet, what the Massachusetts Cultural Council will be able to allocate, um, you could probably hold some funds aside and purchase the table at a later date. But obviously the tables will only be out till about November, so it wouldn't be for as a long period of time. I also asked her, could we paint a table so that it had a more artistic, um, feel to it and she said absolutely as long as it's good for the outdoors and it doesn't like you know wipe away or anything like that so that's a lot of information I know I'll just I'm just gonna go over the, the things again so it was the um, art box and moving forward with what we've already voted on which is an art box down by the PTC building on um, Kendrick Street with the artwork, uh, the hands artwork by, who was that by again? Charlie, do you mind reminding me? John Judge, who is very John, excited. John yes. Judge, great. Um, so that's the first thing, we're just gonna go a little streamlined with the hopeful uh, getting approved by the town. The next thing is working with either Paul Good or possibly Community Center of Needham to streamline a mural project or Needham Cultural Council could go their own direction with that, but it would probably take a little longer and need town approval. Um, unless you found a business that owns their building and you could probably do that faster um, in terms of getting something out there. Um, sidewalk reminders were something that Sandy thinks the town is interested in sooner than later. So that's one other way to go. And then the last thing is um, the picnic table. Sorry, picnic table. Thank you. Um, and that's something that the town would love, but will cost us money. And I don't I know. A, I've not I done a, any research. Hold on one sec. Uh, okay. Monique, just give me one minute. Sure. So those are all the projects um, that I, could, I remembered and followed up on. Uh, so I'll throw it out to everyone for questions and comments now. Just raise your hand and I'll call it on you if you have a comment. So Monique should go ahead and go first. First of all, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Things no I, I wanted to mention, since you mentioned the picnic tables, there are quite a few um, car carpenters, handymen in town that actually do a lot of great work. They're looking for jobs right now. One guy you guys might have heard of, Rich McIntyre, is excellent. He's a Needham person. And I don't know if the council would be open to allowing one of our Needham residents who is very great with carpentry actually make a picnic table and then you can kind of design it, whatever artists want to add to it or whatever. Um, but I know some of these um, carpenters in town or people who do cabinet woodwork, cabinetry and woodwork are actually looking for work right now. They're actually, I've noticed that for instance, Rich McIntyre took a job like working at the general store down the street. So I know that these individuals in our town are very artistic. He built some shelves for us. And I mean, he is impeccable in his symmetry for his eye. And so if we could assist some of the residents who actually could use carpentry work and maybe able to build it for us, maybe it could be an option. I don't know, but that's all. Great, Gail. Gail Lustig. Um, 
So first answer your question, Monique, I think we need to figure out how to do that. It's very difficult to get money to anybody that's not a business. Um, so I will follow up with Michelle to see what our balance in the Need Arts account is. I know last time I looked, other people were reducing that balance. I wanna make sure that it was only the $100 that we know of. Um, it, should, it, it should be, but yes, that would be, be good But also like the money that comes in for the, so we got a thousand from Beth Israel Deaconess and we're getting the other money that Betsy got us. Um, if there's extra, you know, it should go into Need Arts. We need to figure out how that goes because right now the money's getting deposited to the town as a donation. Uh -huh. um, but I, I do know that it is a little challenging having to work with POs overall because it doesn't give us the freedom to do what we'd like to do. I understand the town's process um, and it's possible we could take a person who's a vendor and onboard them. Um, alternatively, if we did have grant money, we could use that and treat them as an artist, but we'd have to like, we can't really grant money at this point. We would have to wait till next mm -hmm. fall. So it wouldn't be as immediate. So we are, our hands are a bit tied when we spend money. Like I couldn't even spend $25 for balloons nope. and get reimbursed. Like you have to order them ahead of time with an approved vendor. So that, that is, that's a little bit of a challenge to our creativity and the great ideas. So I just wanted to set the mm -hmm. expectations with people that, you know, even the little things certainly don't ever spend anything out of your pocket because you're not going to get it back <laughs> unless we do it through an approved vendor first. Yep. So I just wanted to mention that to the council in general because we're doing a lot of various things. And um, once they change that policy, even though we have money in the account, it's, it's frustrating that we can't really spend it. So. Um, anyone else? Comments? Thoughts? Kathy. So, I mean, the town did purchase picnic tables, so they must, they've used a approved vendor. Yeah, so, no, uh, those were, this is, yeah, they, they took those from the Y, the ones that are. Oh, out. they did. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, they were borrowed from the Y. They were oh, the okay. in the center of town. They're not. That's nice. Um, they were borrowed. They're not purchased. Okay. All right. But it, it was a good, I, I wondered that too. <laughs> Charlie. I do have to say, Charlie Nanda, that I was jazzed by the idea of doing like a public art project that could be a picnic table where people voice what their thoughts are during this crisis. Um, either like a need a Miz and then they get to write on the table. Hopefully that wouldn't create some graffiti, but mm. some sort of community <laughs> art project would be, would be awesome in my mind. And, yeah. and I know Tova Spector actually had said that she's done picnic table collaborative community projects before and she's willing to talk to us about what the process has been in the past for them. Um, but yeah. Gail yeah, Lustig, I'm not trying to be a buzzkill, but I, I do want to say having being an admin of the Needham page, we need to walk a really fine line. Yes. Like there are people that disagree in this town. There are probably 25 opinions for every 20 people. So I think, and, and we can't really say, oh, that's not what Needham is. So mm -hmm. I love the idea of doing it. I just know how do we manage the free speech unless we let them like choose things that we've already chose. Like, I, I think we just have to be very careful because it's, um, things just get out of control and I would hate the project to be run like say you have one person who just said something so offensive to some but it's not mm -hmm. where is it's a, it's just an opinion that people don't like well do there are two solutions that? for that one is we got a lot of Needham Cultural Council chalk so that can be erased <laughs> pretty, pretty easily yeah. if we do mm -hmm. talk yeah or or but two is that Tova is like, this is her profession yeah. is to build that. And maybe if there is a lot of 
voices that are having trouble coming together, then that would be a good project to do. I'm mm -hmm. just not sure the timeline before November that could yeah. get kicked off. Right. But, but it, yeah. I think that the timeline is key. So in some ways, this has to be a fast turnaround or it's not helpful. Yeah. So I think as much as we'd love it to be X, Y, or Z, what it really is about is providing an extra table because the town seems to need them and maybe somehow painting it so that it's clear it's need of cultural councils or that we donated it more than anything else, only because again, unless it gets out there in the next few weeks, I'm not sure it will have much bang for its buck. I think there could be a further conversation of where that table goes after the fact and then gets repainted or the project then gets painted on it at that point. Um, and so that it could live on and be what we would really want it to be. But I think for now, it's a matter of just purchasing it and kind of getting it out there is my gut feel. I don't know. Yeah. Does the, I, mm -hmm. sorry. sorry, just raise your hand. Yeah, yeah Julia. Um, does the town have a list of approved vendors that we could look mm -hmm. at to see if we could, because I do think like if we're going to do this, we should get it up like very soon because I think once summer's over, people will probably start using those outdoor tables less, even if they are up until November. Um, so this is like prime time. Um, so if we're able to move quickly on that, it would be great because I'm assuming, like as Gail said, the, pro the PO process is lengthy. There's definitely approved vendors. I think we'd probably have to either ask for a full list or if they didn't for some reason have that, we'd have to ask like for a way to look at who has picnic tables and who yeah. we would be able to buy from. That's how we did the chalk. Um, yeah, I think it might be good just to have that list of vendors anyway, and we can put mm -hmm. it in a drive um, so mm -hmm. that if we are wanting to buy anything, we kind of know we were all on the same page about who we need to buy it from. I'm happy to write to Sandy and ask for that, and then I'll just email whatever she gets to me. Cool. So I think to proceed fast, we would have to vote that we agree that we want to purchase a table um, for the, we'd have to make a motion to say that we want to purchase a table to donate to the town for use outdoors during this COVID-19 crisis. The problem is I'm not sure we have an exact amount that we know that's in the Need um, Arts account, Need Arts account. It's over 3,000. Okay. So that's, I mean, I think that's a pretty good amount. Just so everyone knows, that money does not, has not been replenished. So we have been fundraising, or I should say Betsy's been doing a great job fundraising so that all of the art box projects have pretty much been funded with outside um, companies, by outside companies or um, donors. That Need Arts account we've used over the years for various things, chalk or just here and there for different, um, projects. But again, that money does not get replenished yearly. So the more we kind of use that money, just the less that sits in there. That being said, that money's not needed for anything specific. It was kind of left to Needham Culture Council when it was a co- um, or co-entity um, with um, New Year's Needham. So if we vote, the money would come out of that fund and the problem is we don't really know what the total would be. So I think we'd have to say we, we are willing to spend up to X amount and then vote on that. And if for some reason the table is going to be more than that, I think we would have to come back and wait until an additional vote um, to spend more. So does that make sense? Okay. So if someone, if someone, um, wants to make a motion and I think include how much we think would be a, the most we'd be willing to spend out of that account. We can then go for a vote and see if it passes. If it doesn't pass, then I think we could change the amount and try again. Um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what, before we vote, what is the reasonable amount for this table? A thousand dollars, $500? I have no idea. But it yeah, could, I'm just gonna. So, I'm gonna look it up. So I'm already looking it up. Yeah. Gail Lustig. Um. So I assume we want wood because plastic's difficult to yeah. write on. So, like the top of the line 
fancy schmancy. I mean, the plastic are expensive, but the wood are, I mean, I'm seeing one for 119 at Ace, Ace Hardware. So I would say like $500 would definitely clear it. Yeah, yeah. this one's nice for $500. Is it wood or plastic? It's wood. Yeah, I'm looking at Lowe's too, I mean. Okay. They also are, a lot of the places are sold out. Um, I know I've been looking for furniture for my personal house and because everybody's living in their backyards, <laughs> yeah. it might be difficult to find one that's not right. a fortune. So that might actually be a challenge. Right. Um, another thought I had is we could buy an inexpensive one. We could also paint it with chalkboard paint. Mm -hmm. And then it can be erasable, but it can be written on and drawn on and then can be wiped clean. Um, just a thought. So um, this, way, this Wayfair picnic table, um, sorry, it's Kristen, sorry to interrupt, Gail, just, just to throw it out there, is 800, but it looks much sturdier, better quality. So I, my guess is it is it's going to be anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars to buy a decent table. Mm -hmm. Is my guess. Elizabeth, all right. I, I, I definitely think we should buy something substantial if we're going to buy it and yeah. have our name on it. We, we don't want to have something that's just not worth it. Yeah. I think the, the, the one plus, uh, it's Kristen again, this, the one plus is that if it were sturdy, it could live on. We'd find, I'm sure, a nice place for it to stay. Um, so it would not just be for the next few months. It would probably be a much longer term use somewhere in town. Yeah. yeah, I do see the more expensive ones are the ones with the benches attached. Mm -hmm. um, and my concern is that those wear and tear worse than like, if you have the benches, you can always replace a bench. But like if the seat starts falling apart in the connection, yeah. that, that's kind of what, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to raise the amount to 1000 and we can pick and choose what we'd like, but. Sharon. Uh, Sharon Breitbart. Okay, I'm going to be a party pooper. I'm looking at the date. Uh, it's June 22nd, and I think the chances of getting getting the process approved by the town, making the purchase and getting it delivered in time to have an impact um, is not a thousand dollars worth. And I'd rather see the thousand dollars going toward um, something that might benefit or um, more directly benefit the artists in our community. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. No, no, it's very valid. I am, I am very concerned valid. about the timing. I, yeah. I agree with you because what if their approved vendors don't have anything in stock? Right. Mm -hmm. In which case we'd have to go through a process to get another vendor. I mean, I'm, I would have no idea if Wayfair is on their approved well, list. Right. Probably not. Probably right. not. <laughs> so it's probably a major things like Lowe's and Home Depot, which probably are sold out at this point. And if it doesn't get here until even two months, which I think might be still a little quick to get here, given all of the steps we need to go through, um, I think then we're at the end of August and it's, it's losing its impact. Oh. Now you, oh, this is Kathy. Uline might be on their list because that's just a company oh. that, and, and they have um, a six foot and an eight foot. So the prices are, you know, 250, 260 or 180. Um, what? 380, 280. It's a, they're attached benches. It's all a one piece unfinished, but, um, they have an economy wooden bench, a wooden table and the deluxe wooden. Oh, it's um, unavailable until September on the deluxe. Yeah. yeah. So that's the economy doesn't have that message. And uh, those, oh, sorry. The eight, the eight foot is 280 for a single table. 
They do have to be assembled. Oh. <laughs> Put them together. That's a project. <laughs> <laughs> That's our community project. There we go. Together. Right. And presumably Probably. finished in some way. Yeah. It's unfinished. Yeah. I'm super jazzed by the, Charlie Nanda. I'm super jazzed by the idea of the picnic table, but if it's not a community art project and it's just like a, a marketing piece that says our name, I don't think it serves the same purpose. Mm. And so if it's the, a picnic table that has our name on it, it would be like a no for me, but if it's a project where it's, it's supporting. Yeah, like, I, I tend to. Yes. Kathy, I tend to agree that if we can have an art component to it, but, but meanwhile, with the timeline, I mean, we could always have that be sort of the future piece right. of it. Because um, I'm sure we could find a place for the table later, like either at the pool or at, you know, one of the day camps, you know, the uh, the town's day camp somewhere or something. Because um, gosh, it won't be like this forever, will it? <laughs> Let's not forget we have two pianos to decorate too. That's true. Right. We have a lot of work to do. So I would say if anyone feels strongly and would like to make a motion um, to buy a table for X amount, being the maximum amount of dollars to spend out of the Needham Arts account, they're welcome to do so and we can vote on it. And if no one feels strongly about it and we don't have a motion, then we'll, we'll leave it there and we won't work on that. Question. This is Julia. Mm -hmm. um, could we motion to look into it to see if it's possible to get it here in a reasonable amount of time? And I, if so, we move forward. And if not, we don't. We could combine that of, into the amount into the motion, I think. Yeah, we could. It's a lot of stipulation. So the two ways of looking at it is you could do the research and then bring it to a vote at the next meeting. But I understand that that may not work if there are no summer meetings. Um, Otherwise, yes. Could you motion that you're going to look into, based on a certain timeline, a certain amount of money being the max, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and, and layer it that way? Yeah. And then we'll and, it to a vote. And like wanting it, Kathy, wanting it to be accomplished by a certain time, a certain date or something. Okay. Gail, I, I, I think it's actually a pretty simple motion. Like you can say, you know, we approve, say, $1,000 with the assumption that it's delivered by July 15th. And just a little add on to that, someone has to be willing to do the work. Right. And no, that, no, I know. <laughs> right. I'm not so making a motion because I don't, mm -hmm. I would do the work. But. Right. So either someone needs to be willing to take it on or it would fall to the new chair or... I think unless the R box committee project committee wanted to take it on, you know, it would have to fall somewhere for someone to take over. Julia. Yeah. Um, do people want to, it seems like depending on what we do, people will, will approve it or not. Um, but I haven't heard from some people. So like, are we in agreement that if we're able to do it and have it be an art project of some sort, or do people feel like how Sharon feels in that, you know, with it being July, should we just think about something else to do? Because I could go either way. It's Kathy, I, I feel like I have more of a problem with it that it might be $1,000. I mean, okay. it just seems like when I think of the total that we might have, that that is a big percentage of what we, what we have. This is Gail. Do we want to make a motion and see if there's any interest? <laughs> Does anybody want to make a motion first? Because if nobody wants to make a motion, then we're not a lower amount, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Nobody's nobody's offering up a motion. So. So let's just say we'll give it. We'll give it a. Uh, 30 seconds if someone feels strongly about putting together a motion just take a second and think about it and again there'd need to be a timeline attached to it and um, a monetary limit in order for us to be able to vote on it
Okay. So since no one made a motion, we'll move on and we won't work on that project for now. Um, and that's fine. It's not like we have to. So that's great. Um, the only other thing I think in terms of this agenda item um, would be just to mention that for the mural, I'm going to be working a little bit with the community center group. So if they're going to move forward with the mural, I'll just reach out um, to whoever our new chair is and see if there could be a collaboration or maybe some people want to volunteer and help and kind of move it forward that way. In terms of um, Paul Good, if anyone is willing to reach out to Paul Good, maybe, you know, Charlie or Yael who have already met him, um, you know, that would be one other way that we could go forward. So if either of you feel like that's something you want to move forward with, great. And if not, you know, you don't have to. It's just an idea of Sandy's. Charlie. Charlie Nanda, I'm happy to connect with Paul and see what projects he has going. I think he's always good to check in and see because maybe he's got eight picnic tables lined up as well. Right. I would not be surprised. I would yeah. not put it past because I'd love to jump on board. I'd love to partner with the Revitalization Trust Fund and also, um, you know, a COVID project or, you know, a cultural response project to this crazy summer we're having, I think is important. Um, I just think the timeline is too short for what we were discussing in the past. That's great. I have one other comment about the asphalt art project, mm -hmm. the idea of the ground. Um, I know we talked and I, I, know, I just remind, as a reminder, I did send a um, letter to the select board on their complete streets program, which they're getting funding for. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, they've been putting in the pedestrian crossings lately, mm -hmm. which was one of their key priorities. And um, I think it would be awesome to get an arts representative on their process for mm -hmm. the project that they have going on, because I think public art can really help them in what they're doing, and I and they seem to be a little bit open to that. So um, maybe suggesting that I know they've kind of passed the design review process for I project ideas. I'm not sure where they are in the process of getting the funding. I don't I don't actually know how it works, but I think it'd be great if they we had had someone that could just sit in on some of those meetings and advise about how public art could be helpful in all those things they're doing. Well, I do believe that one of the community center uh, members sits on that, I'm oh, pretty sure. Um, so I can at least put a bug in their ear as a quick way to get a little bit more. And I did send all of that information to the community center and they loved the idea of the mural, especially when we talked about the two girls who passed away on Webster and doing something in that space to kind of um, in their memory. So I don't think it's something that's going to happen fast, but it's just there was a lot of excitement around it. So I don't think it's like a dead issue in that way in terms of it not moving forward. I think it's just going to take time. Yeah, I did love how Asphalt Art was in the news in DC that you sent yes. me a picture of that mm -hmm. Black Lives Matters. Yeah. You can see it from space. It's such an amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. really impactful <laughs> project. Yeah, that's like my little pet project that I really want to make happen. So I'm just going to keep working on it, specifically for the two girls who passed away. I just think there should be something there. Yeah. That, you, know. you know, something I just, this is Anne McCaffrey. Um, there's a ton of plexiglass that's gone up everywhere, um, uh, you know, in all the stores and schools. And I don't know how long this is going to last, but um, there's a woman who is a plexiglass artist that I recently um, found out about. She does, she paints, her big thing is like ocean scenes that she paints, but she's a previous industrial designer and knows all about how plexiglass works and stuff. So somebody approached me and said, you know, anyone who might want this and maybe like, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, of course CVS would probably want it, but like it'd be nice in schools, depending on what happens in the schools, how much plexiglass is set up to make it less, um, cold and austere if it is going to go up um, in cafeterias or classrooms or wherever it might be. And I think it actually to have kids do the art. So mm -hmm. she could supervise them like that. I'm just, I, I'm at the very beginning of this, but I just wanted to throw it out there as like a, a COVID thing with all the plexiglass. I mean, I know working in a doctor's office, 
I was like, oh, we should get her to come in here because it's so unsettling to see all this um, barriers that are just up everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's a covid -y thing that I'm throwing out. More information to follow one day. Hmm. And I just did a plexiglass art project with kids, which was like blown, um, you melt crayon wax on it and you can kind of like build all these, um, it looks like Jackson Pollocky, but it was awesome. And what are you, what are you, are you going to be putting it up as a barrier or is it just like a fun project? It was remote learning, homeschool <laughs> fun. <laughs> Um, but it would kind of cool. I mean, especially for like the littler kids too in classrooms. I mean, if this, I don't know what the classroom's going to look like. So we'll, you know, uh, we'll see. That's cool. Oh, you, you know, and Kathy, when you think about like cafeteria lines and, you know, those kinds of larger group settings where they're going to have that. Yeah. It would really spruce up the space. Mm -hmm. And... It would really be interesting. And that could almost be, like you said, more of a community project that way too. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's sort of a wait and see right now. Um, but I, I'm, I'm just going to talk to this artist and see what she has for ideas um, and, and see what the story is. And then, you know, we'll, you know, we'll wait and see what the schools are going to look like. But I, I mean, is there anything in the town that's already up like that? I mean, nothing's really open, so it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you guys, the doctor's office is all, it's everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's, and it's even, even the, like the cafeteria in my hospital used to be just open. And now like the cashiers are like sitting in a plastic box and it's, you know, it's, it's great because it's protecting them, but it's a little bit isolating for. Well, just for the sake of time, because we are getting close to yes. 830, I would say, and keep doing research on it, we can, you know, you can send out information to the committee um, or to the council of what you find out and okay. kind of keep everyone abreast of what you're kind of learning so that the next time there is a meeting, you know, it can move, you know, further a little bit faster. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't, um, I, I just found out about it. I almost forgot yeah. until you guys were talking and I was like, oh yeah, that, that plexiglass lady. So I'll find out more and, and um, send you her website and send you what I find out. That's great. And the good news is in terms of the art box, so Charlie, if you're willing to then get everything to Sandy, that should move forward a little faster. So the art box committee should have some work to do fairly soon to get that out to print and, and installed. So that's great. And then art box project committee, you have money now for a third box. Um, so Charlie, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about where the committee is maybe in terms of that third box, just so we have an idea. Yeah, Charlie, Nanda, uh, I think maybe the committee needs to meet over the summer and discuss um, the third box because we have the location at Central Ave and uh, Great Plain Avenue. It's kind of near, near like Newman Elementary. In the past, we kind of talked about a student-based project or um, the last time we met, our second box idea had been to just have an RFQ, like a request for qualifications and not have people propose the actual box, but we pick the artist and then commission them to do a work based on some th sort of theme, which could maybe really fit nicely because there's definitely a lot of themes to focus on right now um, and collaborations to have happen. Um, but that was really where we were at. But now that we have funding from Middlesex Bank, yay, then we full steam ahead on that. On a third one. On the third, yeah. Which is really the fourth, because there's one by the hospital that we did years and years ago. Okay. It's exciting. All right, so then that's great. Uh, we don't need to vote on anything. I think we're going to move on if no one has any other comments. I know we could talk about these projects all night, um, but I think we just need to move on for time's sake. And then, you know, just to throw it out there, if the Art Box Committee you know, wants to take on moving another project further, I think that you can absolutely do that. Um, you just, again, can't install something or buy something without the full council um, vote. Awesome. All right, anything else before I move on to our election of officers? Okay, moving on to our next agenda item, which is election of officers for our 2020 slash 2021 um, 
season, I guess we call it that. Um, so Charlie and I talked about just giving everyone a few minutes to give um, a sense of if they're interested in any particular uh, office. So we have a chair, we have a treasurer, and we have a secretary for the culture council. We do believe that we can have a vice chair. Um, Gail, give me one sec. So if someone's interested in vice chair, we believe that that's something, we couldn't find anything in the actual, I, I read all the MCC guidelines today and I didn't see anything. Although I do believe at some point we had a vice chair listed and Sharon, you were it. So we've done that before um, and we could decide to vote on that tonight as well. So again, we're just looking at this point to open up the floor. I will call on people. If you want to say that you're interested in a particular position or anything else like that, then we actually have to nominate um, in order to do the vote. So someone nominates someone for the position, someone seconds it, and then we vote. Um, and that's how we go about uh, voting for our, our um, officers. So I'm going to open it up now. Just raise your hand if you have any kind of thing you want to throw out there to the committee. I, yeah. I, sorry, I was just a little confused why I was invited as the vice chair. So it is different than treasurer, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think why. it's, I just think it's wrong. Okay, that's what I thought. So the positions we have now are secretary, treasurer, and chair. But okay. I do believe we can name a vice chair because I yeah. believe we did that for Sharon. And so yeah. it can be done um, in terms of like the job description of the vice chair. I think it, it's not exactly clear. The treasurer obviously takes care of all of the, um, the monetary paperwork and working with the town in terms of um, getting all of our grantees paid out and then keeping a you know, an account of where our accounts are. The secretary takes meeting minutes and posts the um, agenda and the meeting dates with the town. And then that's pretty much it. Obviously for these Zoom meetings, um, takes the roll call and things for, um, for votes. Chair, mostly um, runs the meetings, creates the agenda in conjunction with the secretary, um, reaches out to the town to secure the meeting locations and dates. And then also pretty much does all the work of informing grantees of their, their um, grants and it somewhat monitors them in terms of what they've sent back, but the treasurer does a lot in terms of um, taking what they've sent back in terms of paperwork and getting it paid out. So the chair and treasurer work together on those things. Obviously the chair runs meetings and also um, to a certain extent is the main contact with, with the town. Although, you know, our committee has also had contact with the town. So we've been doing that, um, you know, we've been doing that all in conjunction. With <laughs> So that's kind of a gist of what everything does. Also, I now that we do, I did check with um, Sandy and we can put as much information on that drive as long as it's not public, because uh, I wasn't sure about that. And so she said, yes, we can keep putting things on there. So as the chair, I can keep putting things on there just to make sure you have all of the documentation of what's gone on. Although most of what we do is already on the MCC toolkit and we just copy there draft of their letters and templates and use what's on there. So there's not all that much that I have that isn't already out there. Um, so if anyone just wants to let us know if they're interested in any of those positions or any thoughts on any of the positions, feel free to raise your hand. Charlie. I worked really hard for a bid to get Kristen's extra time, which fell flat on that one. But in lieu of Kristen, I'm, I'm interested in doing a position. Um, I, I, secretary is a little, um, I'd be happy to hand that one over. <laughs> Not my forte. Um, I'm interested in the chair position. Uh, 
and I'm thinking of this next year as a growth year, but also sort of like a year of austerity because it sounds like the state budget is not going to be even released till July 1st. So this year is gonna be very different. The program timelines may change. Um, so, and all the grant recipients may be pushed till next year. Um, so it will be a big learning year process is not, and it's not my favorite year to step into a new role, but with Kristen staying on, I would be willing to do it with that. You mean as an ex officio? With an ex officio, that's okay. With a ex officio advisement and with the strong, strong board we have. Um, one second, Julia. I just wanted to mention in my conversation with Sandy that she's pretty sure that things like Needham Lights um, won't happen. So that is just a kind of a good gauge for the new um, chair in terms of how many events they'll actually will happen. Um, I do believe those two events, Needham Lights and the Arts um, Fair, won't probably go on this year. She did mention that if there were other creative ways of doing needle lights, for example, wrapping trees with lights, things like that, that um, Needham Cultural Council or the Community Center Group or any other group is interested in doing, she was open to those ideas. But those two events probably won't happen as they have in the past. Julia, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is Julia. I am interested in being secretary since Charlie is going to be stepping up. Um, so. Happy to take that on. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to stay in the treasurer position. Um, it's also one that, um, I mean, if we're not doing any, if we end up not doing any grants next year, it's zero work. Mm -hmm. um, but even if it's not, um, I would love for someone to go through the process with me um if i continue to do it next year and show them what that process is and it's basically working closely with the chair and following up and things like that so i'm happy to do it if someone else wants it i will not be offended but i just want people not to be pressured to take someone they're not comfortable with because not everybody likes the bookkeeping and the tracking and such I will put it out there that I did that for two years, I think, before chair, and I have no accounting background, so it's doable. Yeah, because there's no checks to write. It's it's all that the town Just does. Keeping it all. track. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'd be willing to shadow <laughs> for the year in order to learn for the future. Good. Sharon? I nominate, nominate Charlie Nanda as chair, Julia Gould as secretary, Gail Lustig as treasurer, and Yael Halpern as shadow treasurer for this next year. I second. All in favor? I think we have to roll call it. Charlie. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. We could do a raise hand on this. Zoom. No, we can't no, because it has can't to be recorded. Nobody can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Sharon Breitbart made the motion, so I'm going to move on to Elizabeth Cook. Yay. Kathy Friedberg. Yay. Yael Halpern. Yay. Julia Gould. Yay. Monique Carrington. Yay. Gail Lustig. Yay. Kristen Mazzacci. Yay. And Caffrey. Yay. And Charlie Nanda. Yay. Sharon, you know, you know, so Kathy. Congratulations. But before we move on, I don't know that we need to vote me as an ex officio, but I think we should do it just in case. I don't think it really means anything because it's open meetings and I could come to them anyway and still help. But let's just have it on the books just in case it actually does mean something and somehow it's helpful. And it so moved a lot to me. So second. No moved. <laughs> so moved. Um, yeah, I'll second it. Yep. Great. Real quick, just do a roll call. Sorry, Charlie. Yep. yep. Sharon Breitbart. Yay. Elizabeth Cook. Yay. Kathy Friedberg. Yay. Yay. Yael Halpern. Yay. Julia Gould. Yay. Moni Carrington. Yay. Gail Lustig. Yay. Kristen Mazzacci. Yay. 
Anne McCaffrey. Yay. And Charlie Nanda, yay. Awesome, great job. Okay, so last agenda item. Other business, the only thing I really want to talk about is new members. Um, I do think because of this Zoom um, format and that people might have a little bit more time on their hands, for some people they have less time on their hands, for some people they have a little more time on their hands, it wouldn't hurt to maybe everyone reach out to one person you know who you think might be a good um, addition to the Cultural Council. I do feel like because Ron is stepping off and I'm pseudo stepping off, um, a few more people would be great. And so I think this might be a good time to, to start working on that. Anyone who's interested has to go to the website and fill out the committee form. And Sandy said that that will still, that process will still go forward even during um, COVID-19 and what's happening. So I just wanted to put that out there. And I think that is it. Anyone else before we um, adjourn? Any other comments or, Charlie? Um, Charlie Nanda, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, so if we meet in the summer uh, working groups in July, um, should we then keep the August meeting on the, I would like to keep the August meeting on the books if we have to set the council priorities for September 1st, then we need a meeting to discuss what we want to prioritize for the grant. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when the information from MCC should come out about the granting change in timeline, but we have on the calendar uh, August 17th, and that was a date that they had available. Okay, good. I'll keep it. Keep it, okay. Okay, see you guys August 17th. And just to throw it out there, Charlie, just so you know, you have the date and a few have to be rescheduled. And I just don't know if Clay automatically rescheduled them. And you, I think, talked a little bit to them before we started. But I don't know if he automatically rescheduled those to the Monday before or after or not. Yeah, I think we probably have to select that. So the dates that we have, we can cancel July 20th and just do working groups in July. Then they had available August 17th because it's the uh, third Monday. September 21st was available. Uh, the next three, October 19th, November 16th, and December 21st were not available. So we'd have to meet the Monday before or after. And uh, I know we usually met early December to do the votes. That's mm -hmm. one of the big meetings. So December 21st seems like it's late anyways. Yeah. So maybe yeah. moving the October 19th to the Monday after because it's the, the deadline is usually October 15th. I feel like pushing those a week later is a good thing in case the timeline gets shifted and then we can revisit it if it um, change, if I, changes. I also think from what they were saying it's going to be hard to get dates so I would go for it and use your judgment and just get dates on the books even if not everyone can make it and then if for some reason when you have the September the August meeting you now have dates and it looks like a lot of people can't come try and change one date. So I'll talk to Clay about moving to the week after if that works with you guys. I know he's listening. And then I move. Oh yeah, to... I always forget Clay's here, on here. <laughs> then I move to adjourn the meeting? No, no. Oh, wait. wait. Gail? I, just before we leave, I want to officially on the record thank Kristen for six years of service, even though she's ex officio. Um, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't have been able to serve in my role without her leadership. And I just want to say thanks because thanks. we are bigger and stronger and have way more things going on than when I started. So thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Now you it's can just take a moment. <laughs> It's been really fun and I'm not really going anywhere. I'll be around. I know, so. I know, but still. When we get back in person, can we have a party for you and Ron? Well, we can, yeah, at least have drinks or something at some point. We could do it. We could do it outside. We'll, we'll find a way. At our picnic table that we're not getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, Kathy. <laughs> All right, so um, can someone move to adjourn the meeting? Well, Sharon did. Yeah, oh, good. Did. Can someone second it? 
Second. Awesome. Great. Um, great. We'll see everyone soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take good care, everyone. Thank you. You too. Okay.